So today we are going to learn how to create uh, Ajax spinners and other kinds of controls. Uh, for example, disabling a button, a submit button when Ajax request is going on. Those kinds of controls and Ajax spinners, etc., are very common in web applications, in nice web applications. And we want to uh, see how to do that uh, in Swell. Okay, so we are going to use CSS animations. We, don't, we are not going to use GIF images or, or some other thing to show the spinner. And we are going to use function wrappers. We will look at what that is because it's going to make things very uh, flexible. And we are going to use stores and derived stores. And we will, in the end, we will have counters about every how, how many Ajax requests are going on and spinners, which basically show you the status, um, you know, of loading. So first. Uh, let me just show you the end, end result. So here on my right, you can see there is this browser application and I am going to, and I'm deliberately introducing some delay. That's a three second delay, right? And if I, I have this application that fetches uh, jokes from joke API, uh, these are Chuck Norris jokes. So they are a little bit corny, but let's see. When I click this, there is this gray circle and there is this gray circle. Those are the two spinners. So as I click, the spinner is spinning, and after three seconds delay, the joke uh, came back. Uh, let's see another. Let's if I click again, so I have uh, introduced an artificial delay, and then at the end of it, you get the response from the RESTful service, and uh, the spinner stops spinning. But during the uh, duration of the AJAX request, the spinner is uh, active, okay? And it's also showing the number of Ajax requests running simultaneously. So if you had multiple Ajax requests, we would see uh, more, a uh, bigger number than just one, All right? So now that we know uh, how it, it's working, keep in mind uh, what it's supposed to do. Keep in mind that this spinner is implemented using CSS animations. It's not any uh, GIF or something, okay? All right, so uh, let's get started implementing this. The first thing we will do is we will uh, yeah, have a little, uh, let me just go to my dev, and I am going to npx dig it um, from the Swelt and JS and project template, but I have my own template, so it's in bitbucket.org slash pinspire slash Swelt JS dash template. And I'm going to uh, create a new product called Swelt async counter spinner. So why am I calling that? We'll see in a second. So, so this is called Swelt Async Counter Spinner. Let's open that project. Okay. So the Swelt, Swelt Async Counter and Spinner. There it is. So now that I have this open, let me um, run npm install. So right click npm install so that has uh, at this point i can hit dev okay looks like i have another project running so let me uh, turn on, uh, stop that project so clearly that's why i can uh, someone else is occupying port 5000 that's why. so let me make sure that nothing else is occupying my port 5000 so i have closed that uh, and one second let's uh, Okay, so well, now that I've done that, let me go to my project. Okay. All right, so I have re uh, turned that off. Let me restart. Wait, it's still not happy? Why is that? Oh, let me make sure it's terminated. It was not, oh, sorry. It was not terminated, I bet. Okay, give it another bit go. Okay, now it's working. If I now reload, I get a, an empty Swelt uh, project template. Oh, I clicked on the link. Okay, so first thing we will do is we will implement a, a basic spinner. Okay, so let's do that. 
to do that, I will open my app dot swell and I will put a spinner inside that. But before I put the spinner in there, I'll let's create the, uh, the spinner uh, component. So spinner dot swell. So this is the spinner uh, component and uh, So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, use CSS animation. Uh, I'll create a div and give it a class spinner class spinner. Now most of the work is done in CSS, so let's put style and in the style uh, the basic spinner will be a circle okay when it's not spinning it's just a circle so we say okay um let's give it and make the display uh, so something of type spinner class spinner uh, display will be inline inline block because we want the spinner to be not inline not block but inline block just like images are right then border uh, we'll give it a uh, let's make it a smallish kind of spinner uh, 0.3 em and uh, solid let's say blue for now okay something simple and that's the border and then the um, the width and height width and height let's make it 0.4 em and height also 0.4 em and then uh, the border radius, border radius, 50%. So by doing, making a, a very, so we are giving a very thick border and we are making the border radius 50%. So it's basically the rectangle starts looking like a, um, um, starts looking like a circle. Sorry, blanking out there. So let me now import my spinner. Import spinner from dot slash spinner dot twelve, and let's just show that spinner. Okay, spinner. That's my spinner component. Okay, you see that blue circle is showing up. So it's a bit small. So we can make it larger because it's measured in terms of uh, uh, font size. I can just uh, put my div, uh, wrap a div around it, right? or span, it doesn't matter. It could be a span too. I can make it a span. Right? And then say uh, style, font size, and make it a large font, let's say a 32 pixel. Why not? Right? That gives you bigger or you can make a 64 pixel if you want a really large spinner. Okay, so now this is not spinning, of course, uh, and it shouldn't be spinning like this. Let's make this a gray color thing. And only when it is spinning, which means spinner start loading, that's when you want to uh, give it a border that is um, one fourth in a different color. So let me just save this first. As soon as I save it, it got gray border. And now I can say border top is dot color is let's say aqua. Okay. So at this point, it's not, the, the loading class is not there. So I can add the loading class by saying loading as, a, as an attribute. So we say, class colon loading and this will add the loading class and we will receive that loading as an external uh, property so external let loading and by default it's zero or false if you want uh, sorry it's not external, external i mean export let loading so now from the at this point, obviously, it is, there is no aqua colored border on top. So we change that by saying loading equal to one. 
Okay, as soon as we did that, we got a spinner with a one fourth quarter of the border is aqua color, but it's not spinning at all. So how do you make it spin? That's where animations come in. So this is where we need to introduce animation. So first you create an animation and then you use it. So to create an animation, you, you use the at sign keyframes keyword and then give it a name. The name will be spin, the name of the animation. And animations go from 0% to 100%. Or you can create multiple stop points in between. So I'm just going to go 0% is one thing and 100% is another. So, we'll, so I'll just say we will rotate. We, we want the spinner to rotate, so we will rotate it. And that would be transform, colon, rotate. And it will be 0 degrees. Of course, at 0%, at 100%, the, and we will duplicate this and make 100% uh, stop. And there the rotation is 360 degrees. Okay, so that's the definition of our animation. Now we need to apply the animation and we will apply the animation only to the loading part and not to the uh, spinner part. So we just say animation, name of the animation is spin, duration is infinite, and timing function is, is linear. The linear timing, there is no bounce effect or anything like that. And uh, and then um, the total interval iteration, oh, sorry. Oh, wait, wait, uh, this this was the uh, duration. Duration is two seconds, sorry. Uh, so we want our animation to go from 0% to 100% in two seconds. But then we want it to keep going on. So iteration count is infinite. And that's it, infinite, yeah, that's so if we do these things, let's save it. And it didn't actually, two seconds, linear, infinite, right? It should have worked, but it didn't. Let's, uh, let's right click, uh, let's do a hard reload. It's not doing anything. Because why would that be? So, let's inspect. Let's make sure let's put the this thing at the bottom. Oh right. So if I reload empty cache and hard reload, still it's not spinning. And that means my animation is not applying. Why is that? <laughs> Spin is the name of my animation, yes. And it has 100% and 0%, 100%. Transform is correct. So let me see if the class is present. Inspect. And loading. OK. So dot loading is present. There should be an animation, but I don't see the animation. Why do I not see it? Oh, oh, the word delay. <laughs> That's why. OK, my bad. There should be no delay. OK. And, and there you go. I had a syntax error in there, but now my spinner is spinning. All right, this is perfect. This is the point at which we have a working spinner. So that's the, uh, that's complete, we completed step one to have a working spinner. And uh, that spin, now it's not controlled by anything Ajax. So in order to do that, let's first create an Ajax request. So to create an Ajax request, what we will do is we'll use uh, this API uh, on the net. It's a uh, Chuck Norris joke API. So here's the um, here's the URL for it. So we add this URL. Uh, this HTTP API dot ICNDB dot com jokes random. So if you go there, you get some jokes like this. Okay. So the, the key thing is JSON. The response is JSON. It has a property called value, which has a property called joke, and that's what we want to show. So in order to do that, let's create some scaffolding. Uh, let me get rid of this uh, footer material, and I'm going to create a button. Button that um, says fetch joke. 
and on click this is right on click handler we call a function called fetch underscore joke okay which we are which we have to still create and then uh, we can say the amazing chuck norris this is a tongue-in-cheek uh, repository of tongue-in-cheek jokes jokes so let's see we say if if there is a joke then show the joke uh else um show dot 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 and then close the if okay so let's define joke so let joke be nothing the blank thing save it of course there is still a problem we don't have this function called fetch joke so let's create that function fetch joke and it uh, fetches from this url and you got the response and we will await on fetch so now as soon as we start doing await we are not allowed to use the await keyword unless our function is uh, our uh, function is an async function so let's make it an async function so I hope you know what async await, et cetera, are. If not, um, you can watch one of my earlier videos on that. So then we have to parse the response as JSON. So let's say const JSON is equal to, again, await the response dot JSON. So that parses it. And then finally, we just set joke equal to JSON dot value dot joke. All right, save it. And that the spinner is still spinning and it will keep spinning. We'll we'll get to it. So let's uh, save this. Uh, let's look at the dev. Hopefully, yeah, yeah, that seems to be okay. All right. So now let's fetch joke. Whoa, look at that. We hit, we click fetch joke and it brought back a joke. Chuck Norris is the, re the reason the reason why Waldo is hiding. I told you they are corny jokes. Okay, so at this point, uh, jokes are being fetched, but the spinner has nothing to do with the uh, joke being fetched. So this is where we need to, uh, first of all, let's introduce a little bit of a delay. So right now, this is, uh, this is the, the, the joke gets fetched rather quickly, and see, so we won't get a chance to see our spinner spinning for a while. So, to introduce a delay, there is another service. Uh, it's called slowy.robertmurray.co.uk. So this this service, uh, slowy. This will uh, all this will be in the source code. So this slowy service lets us um, you know slow down a an AJAX request. So let me uh, do this. I'm going to copy paste this uh, URL. So here's the delay URL. We are going to compute the delay URL reactively with the swelled dollar sign colon uh, technique. And we said delay URL is flowy.robertmurray.co.uk slash delay, and then a variable delay, and then URL and the variable URL. Now, of course, the delay variable needs to be implemented. Let's say de let delay equal to 1000, so 1000 milliseconds, that is. And instead of fetching the URL directly, we start fetching the delayed URL. And also, if we want to control this delay, how much delay it's going to be, so we can actually introduce a, um, a, a, a text input or a number input. So let's do that. Yeah. So there is the spinner. Now let's make this a, a div. And there is delay right so it's a in input type number step uh, and then give it a bind it bind the value to delay and then we will say step equal to 1000 so which means it does that in steps of 1000 milliseconds All right so once we do that we got 1000 and we fetch a joke and it takes a little longer because of that delay. 
Now, next thing we have to do is, uh, and by the way, if we increase this delay to two, two seconds, the delay increases, of course, this will take longer. Yeah. So let's now link this spinner to our AJAX request. So the way we will do that is, we, this thing, the spinner takes an, an external uh, property called loading. And this property, loading property, we will control from our fetch job. So let's create an, a local variable called loading, and let's initialize it to zero and make that control, loading control our spinner. So, so loading equal to loading. Which of course, you don't have to repeat things like that. You can just say wrap loading in curly braces and that is equal to the same as saying loading equal to curly brace loading, okay? So at this point, of course, loading is not load, is, isn't, isn't controlling the spinner, uh, is not getting um, updated when we are making the AJAX request. So we basically went, just before starting the AJAX request, before awaiting on it, let us plus increment loading. And then once we are done fetching it, let's decrement loading. So at this point, we will increment loading, we will do our fetch request, and then we'll decrement it. So let's see if this works. Fetch joke. Hey, look at that. You see? I am clicking fetch joke and the spinner starts spinning and on, it stops spinning when the um, when the request ends. So if I increase my uh, uh, delay to three seconds and I hit fetch joke. So now as you can see the spinner is spinning, it spins, it spins for three seconds and then after which get the joke. Chuck Norris wants a four 30 pound bowling balls without chewing. Okay. That's an interesting joke. So at this point, we have <coughs> the uh, the spinner, for the most part, working. But the problem with this is this is not an elegant solution to our problem. Uh, we want something more elegant than this. And uh, so let's see what can we do. Uh, we definitely can do things better than this. Uh, so this we would. Uh, this is what I am calling a naive implementation, where, where you literally have to modify a function and put um, increment in front, and then you do your uh, async activity, and then uh, you decrement a counter afterwards. So that's uh, kind of okay. But there is a, a more beautiful implementation, and that implementation is where you write a general purpose wrapper, which means you can wrap anything. So let's see how how do we implement that. So we write a function called function wrap. It takes a function and it will return a wrap, wrapper to that function. So return yet another function. Okay. So uh, it will take some argument. We don't even. Well, it may take some argument. So what is it? A B because we don't know how, how, what arguments they will take. We just say variable number of arguments, A, like this. Then, so, so this is the wrapper from here to here, and the wrap function is returning the wrapper. And then we call the function that we are wrapping, and then we pass it the same variable number of arguments. This is how, uh, but at this point, it's, it's just passing on the request without doing the wrapping. Well, the wrapping part is we move the, the increment loading, call the function, and we decrement it. And, oh, remember this is asynchronous function, and we want also want to preserve the return value. So, we take const result equal to, and then await it, and return result after decrementing. Only problem is you cannot do await unless the function is async. And the function that needs to be async is not this wrap function. It needs it's this lambda function. So you put async in front of that. And now you have a wrapping function, except that you're not using the wrapping function. So let's start using it. By wherever we were using fetch joke, we wrap. We wrap it. And uh, on click, it was using fetch joke directly, but now it uses the wrapper, the wrapped version of the fetch joke. As soon as you do that, 
This is almost magic. We have a function and we are creating a wrapper for it. And the wrapper basically uh, does incrementing and decrementing of your counter. So save this, hit the choke, you see, and the counter is working. If I increase the delay, the spinner works, right? And not only that, you can actually see loading, um, this, this loading thing, um, incrementing and decrementing. Uh, so let's do that. Let's go to the spinner. And let's say below the spinner or above, doesn't matter. We say uh, count, uh, sorry, loading equal to loading. So if I show that, uh, loading is zero, and now loading is one. Uh, so I can keep implementing, and uh, I keep clicking it, and a loading number increases. And then after, as those requests are finishing, so if I increase the delay to two, or maybe see three seconds. And if I click one, it's one AJAX request going on. I can click twice, two of them, and one of them finished. So now one, and then the second finished. So now zero. But if I click this three times in quick succession, one, two, three. So now we have three requests. First one came back, second one is coming back, and now finally the third one should come back. Yeah, third one. So, so this is this is very nice. This is pretty good. Uh, can we improve on this? Yes, we can. It can get better than this. So how do we make it better? We can make it better by um, how about, so the issue, one of the small issues with this is that uh, this is only for one and, and we have to, these are tightly coupled. Uh, fetch joke and wrapper wrap are very close to each other. And what if, what if there was a completely third party component that did not have access to the local variable loading? If you don't have access to local variables, how do you share information, you know, share, share state in Swift? Well, the answer to that is, Stores. So we will let's convert this loading from um, a local variable to a Svelte store. So that's what we are going to do next. So first, let's import. Uh, we will say writable. Import writable from Svelte store. So that's how you import, uh, write, create writable stores. Let's create a store. Um, so wherever we had this let loading equal to, this becomes uh, writable zero. So the good thing about stores is uh, local variables can only be accessed locally, but stores can be shared. So for user imagine, imagination and, and assume that this is not all in one place, app starts right. Imagine that the, the AJAX requests are happening in one component, the spinner is yet another component, and the button and the form is yet another component. So everybody is separate. So this way, you, the store will make more sense. You know? uh, and you can share it through stores. So in here, instead of loading like this, uh, incrementing, we replace that by saying loading dot update. And what do we do in this? We have we supply a callback, and the callback will take in uh, the current value of loading and return a new, the new value of loading, which is this. So this is very simple uh, loading. Similarly, we do um, decrement with, uh, instead of n plus one, we say n minus one, and that this does the decrement. So at this point, loading is no longer a local variable, it is a store, so we cannot use, when we, have, we want to display it, we don't display it directly like this as loading. We have to put dollar sign, in front of it because it is a store value that we are subscribing to. So once we do that, uh, we will be able to see loading. So the only thing that happened is loading used to be a local variable and now loading is a um, a store. All right, let's hit. So you see loading is working. If I have increased the delay, let's say three seconds and hit loading a few times, I'm oh, sorry, fetching fetch button a few times. So you, you you see it's increasing. Only problem is the uh, the spinner is not working. So let's find why why is it not working? Oh yeah, of course, because uh, the property is called loading and the value is dollar sign loading. So we have to <laughs> we 
we would have to do this. So save this uh, because the name of the property and its value are slightly different. So now if I increase the delay and hit the spin fetch button a few times, the spinner is spinning. And as you can see, it's still fetching responses. So many Ajax requests going on in parallel. Um, and so therefore the spinner keeps spinning. And when the loading number of loading uh, Ajax requests comes down to zero, that's when the spinner will stop. Exactly when I said that. Okay, so this is even better. This is great. Now uh, we are uh, doing, you know, we are using, uh, you know, we are not only using proxy wrappers, we are using uh, stores. So this is great, but this can be even better. Uh, imagine if you had wanted to wrap any arbitrary function and also you wanted to create stores with those arbitrary functions, like uh, accompanying stores to go with it. So let's gen generalize this. So the way we generalize it, make it gen generic rather, is uh, we base. What we do is we create a new file, um, completely new file called, um, let's, let's see, um, let's create a new file called function um, counter wrapper .js. So basically it will take any function and return you a wrapped function as well as a counter store, a store that is the counter for that function. What I'm, what do I mean? Let's uh, first, let's say uh, that um, you have a function, uh, export function, uh, create counter wrapper, which takes a function func, right? And then it somehow returns you two things. One is a store, the other is the wrapper function. So wrapper function we have already seen. So const wrapper is equal to uh, wrap and func. And the implementation of, of that wrap, we can steal from app, which we already have. So let's call it, delete from here and bring it over here. So this is, this is an inner function, keep in mind. And it will, the wrap will basically take the func, um, or it can take f, doesn't matter really. Um, f is fine. But instead of uh, incrementing uh, this store for loading, we have to create our own store. So let's call it a const counter, which is a more generic name. And we, we make it a writable. Uh, starting at zero. So of course we have to, imp uh, this is a store, we have to import it, import uh, writable from Svelte store. Okay, so once we have this, we have, and then now instead of updating a loading, we update counter, counter update n plus one, counter update n minus one, and we are, um, you know, so we have two things. We have the wrapper function and we have the counter function, counter store. So uh, we will now return. So let's move. So now we have to return this thing. Um, the way we return, we just say return. Because we want to return two values, let's uh, combine them into, a, uh, into an array. First value is counter. The second value is the wrapper. Okay. So watch what happens. We come back here. We no longer need this uh, uh, this writable import, and the loading thing. We will instead of uh, creating our own store, we will uh, do our wrapping, etc. So, which means we can copy this create counter wrapper, uh, call that function, and give it a fetch joke um, function. So. It takes the fetch joke function and returns you two things, right? Not one. So we have to convert this into two loading and then the wrap, wrap uh, joke. So um, we say fetch joke wrapper. Okay, let's see. Um, 
Now, wherever we were using fetch joke, uh, we start using fetch joke wrapper. Let's see if this works. So let's let's take a look at it, uh, of, the, of something failed. Let's see. There is. Uh, oh yeah, I did not import that file. Let me import. Import. Create counter wrapper from uh, func counter wrapper. Right here. Okay. So hopefully. Okay. Yeah, that seems to have worked. And now let's just review what we are doing. Our func counter wrapper simply creates two things. It creates the wrapper and it creates the store also. That's it, and it returns those two things. So this way, any arbitrary function can have a counter store uh, linked with it, and both of them get returned like this. So let's. So this is looking a, a little bit like a React um, hooks in a way. So let's see. Now we still have a store just like we had, and. Uh, we can we should uh, probably rename this it shouldn't be called loading anymore let's call this um let's call this um fetch joke counter okay so there, there it is we are using the store fetch joke sound counter and we can call this fetch joke counter how many fetch joke functions are running okay if I increase the delay a little and then say fetch, 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 fetch. So six of them, five, and now four, three, two, one. Then this, this is the final one, and here comes the final one. You see, Chuck Norris ordered a Big Mac at Burger King and got one. So, yeah. Big man at Burger King. Uh -huh. Okay, so so this is a much cleaner implementation. I mean, I hope you can see. Obviously, all the source code will be available to you, so you can see how this is so much cleaner. Uh, now, there is one last thing that I want to show you. Um, at this point, you are creating a new counter uh, every time. Sometimes you want to share. Uh, you want to wrap a function once, and then you want to share uh, the counters across the board. So you could do that uh, if we were, we could pass in a function, check if the function has already been wrapped in the past, and then use the same old pair of counter and wrapper if there's one already existing. To do that, let's create a uh, lookup table. So const uh, counter wrappers and empty empty array right and this is our cache okay and uh, this is our lookup table and we say we create another export function this time instead of calling it create counter wrapper we call it get counter wrapper so this is basically don't always create one from scratch and uh, give reuse one if there is already one and so to make that work we simply say if if uh, counter wrappers uh, so Basically, type of counter wrappers square bracket this function is equal to um, undefined, which means it's not there, doesn't exist. If that's the case, then uh, create one, right? So, how do you create one? You just uh, say um, you also want to uh, store it, right? So, you put it in counter uh, wrappers square bracket function is equal to create counter wrapper for this one. So this is this creates a pair. And if if the so this happens only if this is undefined. Uh, the wrapper pair doesn't already exist. But if it does, then do the other thing, which is simply use what you have. Simply fetch it from the lookup table, from the cache, and use it. That's it. So and let's return this. So this is our implementation of caching version or sharing version of the, the same function. So this way, what we can do is if we created multiple um, buttons and multiple uh, counters and multiple wrappers, let's do that. So here's what we will do in our fetch joke button. 
let's create multiple of these. Okay. So because fetch joke wrapper is a very long name, let's call this and let's give and the fetch joke counter is also very long. Let's give it a little shorter name. F J C. Okay. F J C fetch joke counter and fetch joke wrapper. Let's call it F J W. Right. So this is this gives us the same thing as before. We just renamed it a little bit, and now um, let's create a bunch of them. Let's call this one FJC one. Okay. Sorry. FJC becomes FJC one. And FJC one. And this is all this FJW becomes FJW1. And that's it. So now let's just duplicate this. We will create four of these. Two, three, four. Okay. And similarly, when we come across, let's, uh, we duplicate this also. The um yeah let's just duplicate these guys as well uh, uh oh that's a spinner yeah uh, let's let's put the spinner inside the button itself okay how about we put the spinner inside the button so create spinner right and loading is equal to fetch joke counter one. Okay. So you have a wrapper and your on click is calling the fetch joke wrapper one and your uh, spinner is, is looking at this. So now this spinner is inside. Um, you see, this is inside. Oh, so my mistake is uh, this loading should be dollar sign FJC one, yeah. So that's it. Now, if I run this, so there is a spinner in both the places. Okay. Now, if I create multiple such buttons, okay, let's just create a bunch of these buttons. I created, you know, three or four of these, and I will rename this from one to two and three and four all right so now i got four buttons and each of these buttons they have their own spinner separate spinner okay so you can even do one more thing which is you can disable the button because now we have uh, uh, stores we can we can add new functionality like disabled equal to dollar sign F J C fetch joke counter one. Right. So let me just repeat this on each of these buttons. Oh, sorry. Should be on the button, not on the spinner. Uh, okay. So yeah. If I go to this button and say disabled equal to F J C two. And we do the same thing on the other two. Make it uh, four and three. If I save that, now the the buttons will get disabled. Oh, once again, I forgot to put dollar sign. Let me do that. So this is a store. We are subscribing to its value, so dollar sign is needed. So now, as soon as I I, I click a button it also gets disabled. I cannot click on it second time until the spinner stops, then I can click on it. So similarly, if I, yeah, so each of these buttons is getting uh, disabled as soon as the spinner stops, uh, soon as the spinner starts. Okay, so, so this is me creating four separate, uh, the wrapper and store pairs. But if I wanted some of these to share that thing, we can do that. Let's uh, do one thing where we, instead of create counter wrapper, we will say get counter wrapper for a couple of these. Okay. So get counter.
counter wrapper right so only uh, this third one is not uh, sharing the other three are so number 1 number 2 and number 4 are sharing okay sorry i have not imported i forgot to import that let's do that so comma um, uh, get counter wrapper imported and hopefully this will compile now hmm it doesn't compile let's see what what happened uh huh no it seems to be okay let me reload hmm so there is an error let's see what the error is oh counter wrappers is not defined oh sorry this is oh, it's called i misspelled counter wrappers counter wrappers oh yeah i misspelled this i need to spell correctly okay sorry about that all right so now that we are using so keep in mind that we are so our 1 2 and 4 are shared while number 3 is not shared so as soon as i click the first button 1 2 and four all of them end up spinning and they get disabled also because they are sharing the wrapper and the store while this one number 3 i can still click so this is how um, we can decide to share or not share certain um, wrappers and the corresponding counters so i have saved the best for the last not only can you do this um at the level of uh, a function that you write you can even do this <laughs> at the level of built in functions like fetch window dot fetch so let me show you i will create a completely new um thing for window dot fetch so we will call it um ajax let's call this ajax counter and let's call this function ajax and we just create we can do get or create because it doesn't matter so much uh so and we will what we are going to wrap we can we can rename this to fetch sorry the counter is called counter and this function the wrap function we can call it fetch now keep in mind you cannot say wrap fetch with fetch here you have to say window dot fetch otherwise it will get confused which fetch we are talking about so we are taking window dot fetch which gets wrapped and that's the one we are we are automatically using within fetch joke and when you do this by the way you could you could uh, assign it back to window dot fetch or well, not like this you would have to do it here window dot fetch equal to this fetch right but any case now we have another counter so let's see that counter uh we could go here and where's my yeah fetch joke counter is here and we can say uh fetch uh, ajax or window dot fetch counter let's call it window dot fetch counter this is this can be dollar counter which is what we called this thing now watch what happens i save it let's increase the delay a little bit and as soon as i start fetching things you see window dot fetch counter is at 2 it is combining the ajax request that is going on in the first as well as in the second one so i could choose to uh, to have yet another fetch button so the last fetch button i'm not going to even disable so uh it's going to be it's going to maintain its own uh, counter and a wrapper okay so it's separate from the other ones and it will we, we will make it such that it doesn't disable so when it comes to disabling we say don't disable just zero so so the fourth button will simply not get disabled so now we can we are running all these and we can increase we can keep clicking this we have seven eight how many is that the quest are going on and they are they keep coming back and this counter keeps decrementing and the request are coming back and this particular fetch joke now the button number 4 um 
it is allowing us to create lots of simultaneous uh, AJAX requests, and all of them are getting counted here. Uh, even though it is maintaining its own separate store counter, FJC1, FJC4, sorry, that is separate. But what you are, uh, and you're wrapping fetch joke, yes, that's also separate. But they are all sharing a single uh, wrapper and counter for this fetch, which is same as this guy. And this counter is shared. So things can be super flexible. I I, I don't know. I, you know, this uh, overall seems, uh, I hope you didn't get overwhelmed. There was a lot going on in here. But um, all this source code will be available. Uh, please rewind this uh, this video and look at it several times. And that way you will learn a lot about uh, how to wrap JavaScript functions, uh, what is closure, how closure reference, uh, the surrounding scope, uh, how to uh, do CSS animations. And one more thing, derived stores. Yes, so I did not um, show you. There's another way to do this, which is with derived stores. So you could even derive stores. Uh, and the way you do that is you could combine combine multiple of these. So for example, this uh, count one, one and two are sharing, one and two. And then these three and four are separate. Right, so you could uh, you could actually um, combine them all. So let's do that. We will say import derived from Svelte store, and now we can derive yet another. So we could say let uh, the get that's a der counter, uh, derived counter. Let's call it derived counter. We can say is equal to derived. And then you give it an array of the stores that you want to derive from. And then, and then you give it a callback function that will give you the new value. So the stores that I want to derive from is fjc1. FJC2 is same as one, so I don't need that. FJC3 and four, FJC3 and FJC4. And now I can just add all, all four of them. So dollar FJC1 plus dollar FJC2, no, not two, three, and then dollar FJC4. So that creates a new uh, counter or derived counter, and this one will will give you the same effect as this one, except that it is counting the number of fetch joke calls and not the number of window.fetch calls. Okay, so it's, it's, it's measuring something else, although that measurement happens to be same for both. So now we can see the derived counter over here. So this was counting window.fetch, and then this is derived counter for fetch jokes. And now we say derived counter. So there it is. Now let's see what happens. If I let's increase the delay, fetch joke, and derived counter, you see derived counter is, is increasing. This is counting the number of uh, fetch jokes calls. This is counting the number of window.fetch calls. And so, you can combine these. Uh, so this is a very powerful feature of Svelte where um, counter, sorry, stores can be derived from each other. So here, this is the derived counter store being derived from these three uh, different stores. So uh, these are, um, some of these might seem like advanced con concepts and they kind of are, but they're not difficult at all. So you just have to pause this video several times, maybe watch it several times. And uh, also look at the source code. The source code will be available. Uh, so that's, uh, that's a very nice set of general purpose counters and spinners uh, for Swell using C CSS animations, function wrappers, and derived stores. Hope you learned something. See you in the next video.